This is from Gina Carano, and she says, I feel that's extremely abusive. Gina Carano claims Lucasfilm ordered her to watch trans documentaries, attend Zoom call meeting with 45 plus LGBTQIA members. Well, that's called a struggle session, ladies and gentlemen. That's not actually a meeting. I said the same thing about being forced to watch the yeah. Fast and the Furious franchise. I just want to point that out. <laughs> extremely <laughs> abusive. Um, so this I'm is, just kidding. This is from a recent appearance that Gina Carano made on Tucker Carlson today. Day, which I didn't know was There's a thing. Today and tonight. There, wow. I'll, I'll, so, so the background in this he is essentially <laughs> when she was on The Mandalorian, uh, she, uh, remember, when she went to the, the Disney sphere, you are now property of the Disney weirdos and they feel a certain amount mm -hmm. of ownership over you. Um, Pedro Pascal, who is a huge, uh, they love him. They, they love Pedro Pascal. He's got his pronouns in the bio. Uh, he's, he's part of that community and all this I and mean, that. Are you really contractually obligated to do that? No, 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 no. But I'm saying that the people who are fans, the, the Disney the Disney stands on Twitter, are going to have expectations of you. And the idea was, they said, you need to put your pronouns in your bio. She said, I respectfully, I'm not going to do that. And they kept bugging her about it, even though other people that work for Disney weren't. So Is she contractually obligated no, no, no. to do that? No. But they keep bothering her She might her be it. obligated to That's go to like training sessions that include the so documentaries and stuff they bother her so much that eventually she puts beep bop boop in yeah. her in her twitter bio uh which infuriated because everybody. you can do anything you want and she's already on at this point she's already on thin ice with uh with twitter and when you're on thin ice with twitter you're on thin ice with disney because uh they uh they don't make things for you to like anymore they make things for people on twitter to hit the like button for even though that doesn't translate to dollars mm -hmm. and then we get her uh post uh she became more and more, I don't want to say political, but more and more open about her views. Uh, I used to think that like you can't really classify her as anything, but whatever. She she makes her post. It's basically it's it talks about how because history is written by the victors. Uh, you know they they didn't make uh, the the Nazis didn't make people didn't just inherently take people out of their house right away. They made you hate your neighbors first, and it was basically a call for like look. They're going to make you hate each other long before the government gets involved. When exactly was this? Uh, this would have been a couple of years ago now. Probably. 2018, during, right? Or 2019? Yeah, at least two or two oh, or three years ago. Oh, that's a long ago. time. So, uh, but you, and then when you find could out be wrong. after. I think it's like you, Then you find out after the fact, after she gets fired, they fire her for that. Right, they fire her for making those abhorrent tweets. That's what they labeled it as abhorrent, which is basically like love your neighbor because mm -hmm. uh, before the government gets involved, they make you hate each other before all mm -hmm. this sort of stuff happens, which is not abhorrent. And then we also had at the same time, Pedro Pascal posted all sorts of awful stuff on Twitter. He put uh, losers in 1940, like all these like like uh, the Confederate flag, the Nazi flag, and then the the like MAGA hat. Like so, he compared half the country to to Nazis, proving that it had nothing to do with what she was saying it had everything to do or with the uh the words it had everything to do with the what they felt uh they were just looking for a way to get rid of her uh and they tried to reconcile with her by making her go on a zoom call with 45 members uh of their anoint i guess anointed members that they choose of the lgbtqia plus member uh, community she said i don't i'm not going to do that she said i'm going to i'll meet them in person like we could do something in person uh, she, and so she pushed back and she got fired and immediately she had her interview with Ben Shapiro and it just proves to you how dangerous it is to be at one of these companies and believe anything, anything to, uh, in either direction of what they believe, right? You cannot deviate at all. And what she said was a Zoom call with 45 representatives of the LGBT community, whatever, like, I don't know how that authority is put on them, but that Zoom call with that many people basically dogpiling you is just an opportunity for them to screen record whatever you say and post it to, and, and also deceptively edit it to villainize you so she was of course not going to do that not to mention it's, it's a struggle session it's literally designed to just beat you down yeah yeah i think what's interesting about this like i said i think she could be contractually obligated to do some of these things for whatever reason um there's it other reminds, members of those shows that don't have them in her bio. They just went after her because, first of all, they championed her at first. They're like, strong, independent woman. Look at how great the character of Cara Dune was. But then mm -hmm. they quickly realized that she didn't fall in line with what they believe politically, which became a problem. That's when they start bullying her. Why don't you have pronouns in your bio? Why don't you use hashtag trans rights? All these things that have nothing to do with this television show and shouldn't have anything to do with this television show. Uh, and... and 
this was always going to happen. You cannot, they'll go through your friends list. Like they'll go through who you follow and be like, uh oh, why are you following this person? Then they'll, then they'll do what's even worse. Uh, worse than all of this is cry bullying and concern trolling. When they're like, just thought I'd let you know it's a bad look if you're following this person. Like they, like they, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I think don't care. What I was gonna say is there are a lot of big corporations that require people to go to LGBTQ trainings, to to go to diversity, equity, and inclusion trainings. Uh, most major consulting companies in the U.S. require this of their workers. Like you have to log into the Zoom call for the hour. You need to complete these things, um, mm-hmm. and. The fact that we're seeing in Hollywood is actually not surprising at all. We expect it there, and I think this story will probably resonate with a lot of people who are subject to this in their day-to-day uh, corporate life, which I think it is important for people to hear that like there are people who did not feel like this was appropriate, who did not feel like they should be forced to learn about these views, or especially if they feel like they are being singled out and targeted, like she appeared, like Gina uh, Carano is sort of saying in her story, like, because I didn't believe these things, they needed me to basically submit to trainings until I complied. Mm -hmm. And that is messed up. But again, it happens all over the place. She's in a position to talk about it more openly because her story is better known, but like, Mm -hmm. I bet you anyone who works for a major company in the U.S. has gone, undergone similar things, been required to go to these kinds of trainings. But what they're saying here is that this wasn't some corporate mandated thing. That They're saying that this was a response to people not liking her on Twitter, which is weird. Uh, the cast seemed to have nothing but good things to say about her. Carl Weathers came to her defense. So did Bill Burr, who did a guest episode yeah. on the show, all saying that like basically uh, she got a raw deal. This and kind of deviates from the ordinary experience of just going through force sensitivity training for any corporate job because it was specifically aimed at her and only her. One person being I set to talk to 45 based on people her is past not. social yeah, yeah, yeah. media posts. I, I think that this happens to people, like that they are specifically targeted and asked to attend certain trainings more regularly than you realize in corporate America. Has that happened to you? It's not, it hasn't happened to me, but I can think of at least five people I know who work for major corporations that it's happened to. I can also think they're of They're singled some, out? Yeah. They're Why asked were they singled group. out? Um, they'll be overheard having conversations with coworkers that are like, I don't really agree with that. And, and then someone then like reports it? They get asked to, you know, you get like corporate asked, like you don't have to attend, but we highly strongly recommend that you attend this training. They'll get an email about that. I've, yeah. I've known a couple high school kids. Um, today is apparently National Coming Out Day. And oh. I know a couple kids who attend these really elite private schools who are specifically um, asked, you know, they'll hold like a student leadership position at their school. And they'll be specifically given scripts that are like, even though they are not gay themselves, they're not involved with LGBTQ organizations, they are asked to promote National Coming Out Day and talk about it because the school specifically thinks they have to mm-hmm. or it's just like we highly suggest they'll be told by their principal i mean i guess they could That's say no uh, some of the kids i know are on athletic scholarships they're not willing to risk it right mm-hmm. uh they put you in a position where you are not in your contract obligated to go to these things but it is clear there will be consequences if you say no I'm and i'm this. just saying like it is definitely specific that she's being targeted but i do think it happens more than we give corporate america to people for. who don't have a platform like Gina Carano yeah. has. So she says, I was just trying to keep my head down, not cause any problems, work hard, get the next job, be excited to be a part of every project, make sure you do your job uh, the best you can and keep crawling forward to solidify that career where you can eventually be like, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then she says talking about... Ready to, uh, to talk openly, openly talk about politics? Uh, I don't think... Uh, so th- she says talking about trans rights hashtags and her refusal to comply with the company's direction. She says... When I wouldn't hashtag trans rights, I wouldn't put in my uh, put my pronouns uh, and like they kept on it pressuring. And finally, I just said, I'm not doing this. I didn't even know what people were talking about. I was just not clued into the pronoun thing, which apparently has been happening for like seven or eight years now. So it's a form of forced compliance via corporate structure. Right. So like I said, it doesn't need to be a government that forces you to do something or, or, or makes you comply to do something. Uh, and then they go, like, well, you can quit the job anytime. Sure. But with that comes the Disney press release. We fired her for this reason. They didn't fi- they didn't fire her and give her a chance to leave gracefully. They There's waited- also a way you can get specifically blackballed. Yeah. They in waited that for her to say more than other ones. Yeah, they, they waited for her to say something that would fall in any line 
uh, which was those tweets, which were those very, very mild tweets, which then got millions of headlines that are saying Gina Carano fired for abhorrent tweet. Do they ever actually, the funniest part is you go to those articles, they never show the actual tweet in the articles because they know that what she said wasn't all that awful, mm-hmm. right? That's stupid. Uh, and it's bu- it's a weird form of censor, like not censor. It's a weird form of uh, bullying uh, and rewriting of history, well, right? So if you put it, if you put that headline, Gina Carano fired for abhorrent tweets enough times, people will just take it as fact without actually looking any further into it because they're like, well, there's like nine articles well, about and it, and then they scrub it. It becomes difficult yeah. to find, especially if you're yeah. not someone who has a Twitter profile. You can't just search her Twitter page to find it. I mean, that's one of the reasons that I'm glad you read Kanye's tweet that he's in trouble for because I think it's worth everyone hearing the original text of what the issue is Mm -hmm. right because we so often get told this person said something wrong and they got suspended from twitter and until they deleted the tweet but then we get to reference the fact that they got suspended for this now deleted tweet forever and no one can find the original copy like Mm -hmm. no one is allowed to judge for themselves you have to trust the source that's telling you they did the wrong thing it also twitter deletes your tweet that violated their rules before you are given the option to click the delete button Mm. in order to start your countdown for your suspension so it's really just a mental thing yeah it's like in order to get your account back you have to delete this tweet the tweet which is already not visible to any of your followers anymore they deleted it already which means your side of the story it's a psychological game that they are playing with you but i just wanted to ask like is she saying in his first quote that she wanted to get to a place in her career and like financially where she would have the freedom to be outspoken about politics i did i don't know what the reference where she would be ready to do that or probably what is that about I don't know what that quote is about. The other quotes I knew about this one, that one I didn't know. I feel like it probably means like she has enough streams of income or mm-hmm. has enough re- ne- name recognition she comes from where she money. can move. Does she? I think her parents own like a casino or something. It could, be, it could be. It could I be mean, wrong. and she was like a fighter and stuff. Yes, like, well, she has very, probably had several careers essentially at this she's point. She's got plenty of money saved up from from yeah. the, the UFC. Yeah. And, uh, and she's getting plenty of work still. I, I think this, I mean, if it is financial, like that makes a lot of sense to me. I know there are like, that is one of the major reasons a lot of people don't speak out about stuff they think is unfair or you know bias in the workplace because you need your job mm-hmm. i mean it could just be talking about like making enough money to be financially secure not even for something specific but just to for that peace of mind right mm-hmm. uh and, and she kind of falls in the same category as a kanye west as somebody's like she's not gonna back down from what she believes uh despite i don't think people understand i mean i, I believe i i believe that everyone watching the show would understand how uh abusive and um how much of a struggle it would be to have to have every level of the media apparatus telling everyone in the world you're awful uh and you have to just hold your ground and stand on your convictions that's not easy like it's not so they, i think she knew she was poking the bear with her tweets though i do too uh, i i don't believe for a second that she didn't know that they weren't gonna but i think that she has like she's a fighter she's a strong-willed person you don't get to just push back on someone like that and expect them to cave. and i think she's mm-hmm. conservative operating in a liberal leaning industry yeah. like i think she always knew that this was you know we didn't know it would be the trans issue or the pronouns issue but like i think she's smart enough to realize that like she is ultimately going to be pushed out in some some way something's going to go wrong that's why this line of like i want to be ready like it makes sense to me that if it's a financial planning uh, aspect to it like when she can no longer be in her chosen career being involved in hollywood she'll be able to transition to something else because yeah. she's prepared for it it's also annoying when you find out that everybody else that talks about her that works with her has nothing but amazing things to say she about even her. looks like a pleasant gal yeah she does you know i i, I was when, the original gina carano stan on the show <laughs> the og uh yeah when you are inevitably pushed out for for poking them then there is this like small but growing ghettoized space in the entertainment industry yeah. that is there to welcome you i don't know if you, it's better or worse necessarily but like like, I'm sure you have to uphold certain standards of behavior there, too. And, and I guess then, then then it becomes about where do you where does your value system allow you to, like, how much do those values of yours 
matter to you? Like, do you, uh, does the need to speak out about something that you believe in, does the desire to not put your pronouns in your bio because you're being bothered by people to do so, is that need to do that strong enough that you don't mind working in these spaces that are considered less than the Hollywood apparatus? Yeah. And, uh, but and that is something that's growing and will take years to form uh, and reach its own kind of height of greatness. But you can't get there without putting in the work. And these mm -hmm. people are laying that groundwork now to build up something. And there is some truth, a lot of truth in the idea that the best way to, to take away Hollywood's power is to stop acting as if they're the source of where all legitimacy comes from. Mm -hmm. Stop looking to them for approval and affirmation and start making your own stuff. And that's what they're looking to do. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.